Right guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to do the long awaited rebuilding of my airborne web setup. Now, as with all the other airborne content, I know some of you will hate it, some of you will love it. But anyway, we're going to get on with this. I'll walk you through what items I'm going to try and get on the web gear and uh, then we'll make a start, put the whole thing through together, test fit and everything and uh, see what we come out with at the end. Hopefully it'll be something really good that will make it an airborne impression that's actually worth having as opposed to the stereotype that a lot of people kick off about. Right, so let's uh, have a quick run through of what we've got here. First on the list, just grab these at random, a nice canteen pouch, but it is one of the lovely reinforced ones. Now, people might have big hoo-ha about the airborne, especially getting these reinforced ones, which were made for the uh, cavalry originally. I don't know if that's as big a thing as it's really made out. They definitely had them, but they're not a specific airborne thing. Either way, I have a really nice original one, so that's definitely going on the gear. So we'll pop that aside then. Then we've got ourselves a nice original bandage pouch. Bring it up for you to see a little bit better. You see it's got some really nice brass fittings on there, lovely and clean. So that'll be added to it. We're going to put on the M1 bayonet for the Garand, and then whenever I'm not using a Garand, I'll simply pull this off the weapon. But for the first event that I'll be using this at, I definitely will be using the Garand with it, so see if we can fit the bayonet on there nicely. What else we got? A set of very old and worn pads for the uh, suspenders. Now, I don't know if these are meant to be this colour or if they're meant to be brown. I've never, don't recall seeing originals. I know on like Band of Brothers, everyone's favourite program, that these are brown, but I don't know the case. Either way, these have done me for five years so far and they haven't broke yet and a lot of people have these break the first time they use them. So I'm going to stick with them until they're completely worn out because they're clearly a good set. So they'll go on the suspenders. Then we obviously have the suspenders and the belt. I've already pre-sized the suspenders so I know they're pretty much where I want them to be and fit them to the belt. They'll have to come back on and off and then have some adjustments when I fit, fit the musette bag. But for now they're alright. So they are reproduction suspenders but they're nice old reproduction ones so they're a really good colour. If I just uh, grab my bandage again, you can see it's pretty nice, pretty nice colouring. So we'll go with them and the nice new belt I picked up which hopefully will dull up and get a bit grimy over time. So that will cover the majority of it. Then we're going to fit one of my 43 entrenchion tools, my M43 entrenchion tools I mean. The one in the nicer cover. I've fitted my older faded cover onto the haversack where you don't normally notice it so this will look really nice on the weapon. Decide to go for the 43 instead of the 1910. I don't have a shortened 1910 or anything fancy like that and these tend to jab into your leg less than the T-handle shovels do. So I'm going to go for this one. Then we've got a nice original musette bag, lovely and tidy, bit grimy, which is what you want really. You've seen this bag before. So now it's time for this to get fitted to an actual web set and I'll have to find some more musette bags to use on my vehicle. And then lastly, the three HTC reproduction rigger pages that I did a video on. And I've adjusted the uh, light settings on the camera a bit, so hopefully you can see these a bit more true to what their normal colour is. Everything was a bit too greeny brown in the, that video, but to me on the camera they're looking a lot more accurate to what they actually are in real life. So we'll try and fit all this on. I don't know exactly how it's going to go, probably really badly knowing me, but let's make a start. And to start with I'll lay the belt out and we're just going to roughly figure out exactly where we want to put each of the items. Right then, this is the belt laid out with my first idea of where we're going to put it and I think this is going to take a lot of, lot of attempts to get exactly right. So we want a couple of rigger pouches right at the front where you can access them. I'm going to put the third one right in the middle at the back. I'm going to have the T-handle shovel on my right hand side, yeah, my right hand side. And then I'll put the bayonet and the canteen on the left hand side. I'll worry about adding the pads and that to the suspenders and worry about the musette bag after we've got the belt sorted out. So this might start with this. So what I'm going to do to begin with is get 
this central rigger pouch on. The rigger pouches need to be put on first really because you have to take all the suspender bits off, slide them where you want them and then put them on. So if I just move these items out of the way and then you've seen me do stuff on belts before so I'm not going to go over the exacts of how you do it but as most of you should know by now you simply unclip the suspenders from the loops I'm going to be careful not to lose the positioning because that's pretty much where I want it to be. Then the rigger pouch, going to open up the loop at the back and simply slide that over to where I want it, which is there. And then I'm going to put the connectors back in. Again, I'll probably have to adjust these connectors once the uh, musette bag gets fitted because that's I haven't decided exactly how I want to connect the musette bag yet you can have it so that the back not the back one sorry these side ones go and hold the musette bag down on the bottom loops which I'll show in a little while um, or you can have them not attached to the musette bag at all and have that just hanging down and then you can flick it over your head and spin it to actually access it on your own and then flick it back but the problem with that is when you move side to side the musette bag will swing around all over the place. So we'll see what happens with that. Anyway, back to these rigger pouches. This one's in position. This one's in position. So I now put this bolt or uh, suspender hook back in. And then lastly, we do this one. Pop that in. And there you go. So hopefully this will work out and when these are full obviously they'll be a bit more pudged in like that so they won't take up so much space so just start hanging the wire hooks on right i'm going to start off with the bandage pouch now i know i'm putting this on the front and some people are going to say well in the manual that says they had it on the back and blah 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 there's plenty of photos of soldiers with these in various different places um, especially if you're putting as much stuff as going on this weapon because the airborne do seem to have a lot more bits and pieces it's harder to fit everything on then I think it's quite positively safe to say you can put this or the soldier would put this where that was convenient and convenient in this case is definitely right here so if I can uh, actually get it in come on oh dear there we are Number one and number two. That will also hold this bigger pouch in position a little bit. So if we had that like that, and then we put the bayonet on next to it, hang on, there you go, there's one. Probably be easier if I took the bayonet out of the scabbard one. And there's two, pull that nice and tight down like that, pop the bayonet back in, and there we go. And again, once we start getting stuff in, that should fit quite nicely. And obviously when you're wearing it, that'll have a curve to it. So hopefully that will work. Then moving along, we're gonna go for the canteen. I suppose you can't really see a lot of what's going on there, can you? But as I say, I've shown you how to attach these before. Come on, where's the hole? Right, so that's the first one in. Come on. And there's the second one. So that's that side. And I think that's going to be alright. Doesn't look too bad. And then lastly, we just need to do the E tool. And I'm hoping if I put that there, that will be right down my leg so that's not interfering all the time. But we'll see, I guess. No way we're going to get this in without taking the uh, entrenching tool out of it first. So we'll pop that out of the way for a minute. And do you want that there or there? Let's go with this bit first, on this side. All right, and these are extra awkward to get in. 
All right, there's one bit in. He says that, and then it goes in straight away. Turn them on. And there's two bits in. Right, so that's all of it fit to the belt. Now, I just need to do a test fit. So bear with me a minute and I'll get back to you. Right, so excuse the very not airborne trousers for a start. I just have the jacket on for the sake of test fitting really. So this hasn't gone too badly so far. If I spin to the side here, you see the e-tool's in pretty much exactly the space you want it to be. I might give it a go, pop it one forwards. What's definitely not where you want it to be is this medic pouch. I've given that too much leeway. Sorry, I'm looking at the screen and getting confused as to what my left and right is. That needs to come one over, and then that'll be in exactly the right place and that'll allow this rigger pouch to slide over further, which may even give room, if I can coordinate properly, there we are, to put the bayonet, what you can just see under my arm here, there you go might be able to slide that one forwards as well. So we're going to just make them modifications now and then I'll do another test fit and show you what happens. Right guys, so uh, made a couple of changes. I'll just show you them before I test fit again. So the first aid has actually ended up being moved basically to the back of it. I've moved the e-tool over one, the rigger pouch on this side can now go right up to the edge because the first aid pouch isn't getting in the way. I've moved the bayonet over one and I've moved the canteen cover over one. So now hopefully everything will have a little more space. This is a bit tight here, but once I've got it on, I think that'll be right. If not, I'll move that over again and uh, we'll see what happens. So let's do another test fit. Right then, so I had to make a couple of additions or subtractions I suppose. So these pouches know exactly where you want them, nothing's touching these at all. Spin around to the side here, the bayonet's sitting just where I wanted, it's not going to cause any interference at all. The canteen pouch, if I show you my butt a little bit, I'll move that round a little bit so that's a bit further behind just so that ain't interacting with the bayonet. The T-handle is in the same place it was but now that the Rigger pouch can go forward to vote the medical kit there. That's not interacting with anything. So that's going to be pretty good. I don't think that's going to cause me any problems there. And then the first aid pouch, I've ended up putting right on the back there, as you can see. And I've removed the rear rigger pouch because there just wasn't enough space. So this is a nice sort of thing. I'll have, you know, eight, ten Garin clips you can put in here. So that's the equivalent of your belt. You've got all the bits that you should have. You've got your first aid or your bandage pouch, you've got your entrenching tool, you've got your bayonet, you've got a fighting knife that I can put on the leg, you know how it does. And um, yeah, pretty happy with this. So now we better get the old pads fitted to the suspenders. Right then, this is where we're kind of going backwards and a lot of you probably say, well, you should have put them on before you attach the suspenders to your belt. And that's fair enough, but these are a pain. They twist about a lot, they can make it a bit of hassle getting them on and off as quick when you're trying to you know put it on and off a lot of times when you're just testing the fit so we'll do it this way and that ain't that bad really because all I've got to do now is just unclip the front two of each side try and remember where I wanted them and then this wants to go that way there so they come through there and then they go back through there. Yep, yeah, that'll do it. And then simply reattach this to the belt. One there. One there. Right, so that's one side fitted on. Then we just do the same again. I remember where that one is. So no, that's that way. Don't go twisting up on me.
Right, and that's that one done. And now I've just got to put these back on here. So that's the wrong one, that's this one over here. Oh. If nothing else, you guys are learning how totally incompetent I am when it comes to putting webbing on. So hopefully that's at least remotely entertaining. But it looks like, yeah. So now we've got our pads on. So the only thing left to do, apart from obviously put some ammo in here and a canteen pouch in there, a canteen pouch, a canteen in the canteen pouch, is to fit the musette bag. So we'll grab that and figure out exactly what we're gonna do with it. Right, so I always found the uh, musette bags to be a bit of a pain in the bum. What I'm gonna do is just uh, close it up with nothing in it, just loosely. As I say, I'm not going to do all detailed zoom-ins of me adjusting every piece of kit because you've seen it all before. That probably bored you the first time. Right, so we, what we need to do is unclip these rear straps. That would then go there is the final position. So what I want to have is these ideally folding underneath the uh, pad like so. And then clip and oh, come on onto there. So that would be that side. And then same again, I want to really go underneath the pad. And then pull onto there. And in theory, we'll leave the bottom bit for now. In theory, I can now test this and see how it fits. So I'm just going to do that quickly. Right guys, so I've done a test fit. The shoulder pads are still a massive pain in the ass and I still hate them. They do the job though. I've adjusted the uh, straps on the musette bag, which I've fitted on and tested. That was hanging a bit too low. That'll be fine now. We've got four garand clips in each of the pouches and a nice original canteen and cup in the uh, canteen pouch. The musette bag itself, I've decided for now at least, I'm not gonna fit it to the bottom. I'm gonna have it just hang off the top I've already tested it so you can swing it around and use it and it's not really moving around too much because it's held in by the, by the uh, pads to an extent. If I have any problems I'll unclip the side and I'll put it around but I'd rather have these holding up the sides of the belt rather than pulling the musette bag down. But we'll see how we get on at an actual event. Anyway I've just popped some uh, towels in this because I'm never going to have the actual items in this. I put all of my personal items in the haversack, which you can see over there, which you've seen before. And the musette bag that's on my uniform never gets used for anything, so I've always got another musette bag with me with a shoulder strap if I want anything, or a GP bag, which I keep all my personal items in. So this has just got some towels in it to pad it up and make it look the part. And if you get rained out, you always need more towels anyway, so that's there. So this is how it's going to be, I think, and this is what we're going to test out. I'm just going to pop it on now so you can see what it's like now that's all finished. So here we have it. I'm fairly happy with this. I mean, I know I'm new supermodel, but it's looking all right, I reckon. That's definitely sitting in a nice place. The pouches look nice. Now they got some ammunition in them. It's a shame they couldn't sit a bit further forwards, but if they did, every time you undo the belt, that's gonna fall off. And also, oh my God, my coordination is awful. Also, you'd have a problem with this because obviously they're a full loop, they don't hang on. But never mind, they look alright there. Yeah. Yeah, e tools alright. Bayonets alright. Canteen pouch sitting nice. And if you can still hear me at all, I'm hoping the musette bag looks alright. I mean, on the camera, it looks okay to me. Maybe it needs a, another towel or two putting in it just to puff it up. Maybe even shorten the, uh, the straps on it a bit more just to make it hold a bit higher as well. So I'll probably do that, but I won't bother filming that. But yeah, hopefully uh, you've enjoyed this. Hopefully this isn't a completely fabtastic airborne weapon. No doubt someone's going to find something to whinge about, mostly the fact that I'm a fat lard, I should think. Note that when I do the airborne though, I'll be taking these off and just being blind for the sake of, you know, being authentic, unless I need to actually look at something. So yeah, hopefully you've enjoyed this. Hopefully that's given you a laugh, showing me being useless if nothing else. But uh, yeah, when I'm at the event, 
I'll try and get you an actual full impression video because obviously my impression is not a 43 or should say a 42 jacket with a green t-shirt under it and some uh, beige trousers so that'll be coming up for you hopefully you've enjoyed this and I'll see you next time